Hello everyone, this is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch. Thank you for joining me again for what is going to be another 10 minute challenge. Um, if you enjoy these videos, please do like and subscribe. And you can also hit the bell so you can get notifications when I upload. Managed to get back into the swing of things, uploading uh, regular videos since moving house. I uh, hope you're enjoying them again. Um, today we're going to do a uh, rather a grand building, Palace de Pena, is it, well grand or or mad, I'm not sure which is the best description. Really colourful, hope you can see the picture up here, and I'll pop a link to it as well of course. Really colourful, really interesting. Uh, bright bold blue sky, but a lot of stuff going on below that. So how on earth can we do that in 10 minutes? And also I'm going to talk a little bit as we go about what the point of doing a sketch like this is beyond uh, the enjoyment of doing it or producing something fun and spontaneous. If this is part of something I'm doing a, a bigger A2 acrylic and I'll, I'll hopefully before posting this video finish that acrylic and then uh, if I have finished it you'll see a picture of it now uh, and this is kind of a, uh, a guide to how I got there. So let's go. We've got one minute on the clock so we've got to finish by about 11 minutes. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is just map in the sort of edges. So this, this palace is on a really big hill. And then just start somewhere centrally with this large sort of, I don't know, it's a set of towers really, isn't it? Um, we've got this dome. So we can, we can just map in these shapes already. And as ever, just keeping things really nice and loose. And I'm going to keep that kind of feel of a one line drawing. I'm not worrying about counting the number of windows, but I think it's ended up pretty much correct here just by by luck. But just the windows being there themselves, that's enough of correctness for me. We're getting the feel of the place, not necessarily exactly what it is. And as we move out here, we've got a few sort of chimneys and things. Not everything's clear and there's a lot of shadow so we don't have to make our our sketch clear it can be fun just to exaggerate the shadows or exaggerate the shapes we see and you can see i'm using that first tower as a sort of mapping point along with where i've decided the hill will come in so i i know about where i have to finish and let's sort of pop some windows in and places where it looks like it needs it. I know there aren't necessarily windows everywhere that I'm drawing them in here. Just another line showing the perspective of the building. I'm leaving the bottom for now. Get all these little guys in as well. Okay, we'll come to the bottom because we will see how much time we've got. There's all these interesting rock shapes and um, I'd love to get them in if I can. 10 minutes involves some decisions, and those decisions are all about simplifying what we're doing. Okay, there's a bit of a sort of yellow building there. And then coming up behind, we got these. So we got this big red thing, and then our huge red tower, which comes to about the same level. So let's try and just you know, map that in. But this is a super complicated, you could I mean, if you were going to go for a accurate sketch of this, you could be there for hours very easily just mapping out. So we're going to have to let go of our want to be correct and more just get a feel of what what this place is. And for me, so we, we went there, this is part of a holiday we went on last year, the first time we managed to get abroad in years because of the dreaded C word. Um, but this place was just mad, just colourful, ornate, crazy, just uh, super interesting. And the, the grounds it's in, all this sort of, sort of uh, foresty type stuff that I haven't got to yet was beautiful as well and huge. We, we did a walk to another even madder, potentially chalet building they called it, which was made out of entirely out of wood, but using lots of bark and things, textures and just don't even know how to describe it. Anyway, that walk took us a good hour, I think. Um, just went on 
and on in, in sort of beautiful surroundings, on and on forever. Well, a little bit it did feel like forever because we forgot to bring any food or water. <laughs> so our little two hour round trip was um, filled with a little bit of hunger. Anyway, so we just bring this down and these are what I've been doing here while I've been muttering away is just making these sort of rock shapes and um, I think we can just resolve a bit of shadow in them with our pen with just some fairly random lines. But these really bold lines we know are you know, they're still natural, but they're rock, they're not um, the fluid shapes of trees. So we we need to get a little bit of this sort of idea of trees in there as well. So get some leaf-like shapes in. And there's a fun sort of tree just popping up here. So let's, I don't know if that will work or not, but it's there now. We'll see what we can do with some colour. And then I'm going to leave out this big tree. I think... Um, yeah, I'm not sure that it adds much to this sketch or not. It might do. Um, we'll never know because I've left it out. All right, so where where can we just resolve a bit of detail? We'll pop in a line there. Just a tiny bit more shape here. I've not done these fun windows, and I think I've just automatically drawn a clock face there. I'm not sure that there is a clock face there, but. It fits so and amongst the madness and the colour and things it, does, it just doesn't matter if it's right or if it's my interpretation of right so this is I'm not sure what's going on here and maybe it's okay to leave blank because of how much is going on up here um just gonna try and get there's a couple of, sort of structures looming over here but if we just bolden up the the lines at the front We'll get the idea that these towers and things are, are behind. So a bold line brings something very much brings something forward. It's a great way of drawing a crowd. People at the front are really bold, and as you go further and further back, the lines become less bold and less distinct. Just an immediate way of playing with our eyes, sort of want to understand the world. And I'm just adding more lines here because the shadow is going to be coming across that way. Well, the shadows are here on the left of my image. Um, and then there's another little spiry thing in the middle. So there we go. Let's leave it there for now. As ever, we'll start with a nice big brush and a lot of water. And my palette, also as ever, not supremely clean, but that's how I like it. Um, Happy accidents happen when you don't try and totally control everything. Just gonna bring my um, uh, sketchbook at an angle and we'll just pop some blue in. I'm not gonna bring the blue down to here because I want this yellow to be pretty bold and happy. But where these buildings are in shadow, we can just bring that blue down and that creates a nice sort of pooling effect, a nice continuity through the whole image, links everything together. I often talk about linking, making it simple and making it just easier to understand. And we can just use that blue again for other bits of shadow. And the yellow will seep in here, but if, if I think if I brought it all the way down, we might get a, a loss of that yellow in more places. I'm just gonna pop some blue in there. I like the idea of glazing through that, um, that roof, that dome, and getting the idea of it being in the distance and almost not a real structure, along with the rest of this sort of slightly crazy place. But now, just getting a bit of yellow. I will slightly dull it down here with mixing when this is a, you can tell from the granulation, it's a lunar earth, which I keep in my palette. And then let's just dot that down. We'll mix it into this blue where the shadow is. Pick up a bit more yellow and just bring it in. And here, again, just to get it blooming out. And then really lightly dropping it in here so it spreads and merges. I want it to just seep around. And then coming over, I'm going to use Scarlet Lake, primary red. You could use Academy Red as well. And we'll just 
loosely glaze in here and just get the idea of this building and again I want it to merge I want it to do its own thing I want it to bloom out here and see what happens and I don't try and control it too much okay we can just add in some touches of this red into the yellow which will help with the um, shadows turn it to like an orange which I might see as a a deeper a deeper yellow in some ways I'll just get some real bold yellow going back in here a bit more yellow okay and I do want to bring out this foliage as well it needs to be a bit of green so I've got one green on my palette which is a cascade green so we just can just nudge that around and it's going to bring in those colors and that is absolutely fine by me and let's where we've got the blues we'll hopefully get a slightly darker green just going to pick up some of the muck from my palette to emphasize the darkness and this is actually quite a nice gray that i've in you know, this happy accident i've got quite a nice gray there i can see and this gray will do a great job in my rocks and because we've got that pen in there some of our sort of shadow and shape to the rocks is already done so let's um let's just see where we're at we've got oh i'm finished there you go i'm going to cheat um because i do want a splash of a bit of the green in there and a bit of yellow just to make it sort of brighter and there we go so that's a a 10 minute little bit crazy palister penner um I think it's gone all right you know it's it, it's a complicated sketch we, we've really had to simplify things and gone a bit mad with the color but that's what i wanted um i'm going to let it dry as ever and then we'll see what a couple more minutes can do to refine it or just bring a different edge to our sketch so here we are mostly not quite dry these big wet patches aren't dry but mostly dry and as you can see it's um it's refined itself it's uh, lost a little bit of the boldness of color because watercolors dry um, a little more transparent they lose a bit of their intensity so let's just bring some of that intensity back firstly with a bit more of that yellow and I'm just going to take relatively neat yellow now and just where it's really the, the, the light is really coming off these buildings just nudge that in there and then just to continue the idea of this sort of greeny slightly orange we'll make some red and blue into our yellow and we can emphasize these shadows and we're being a little bit neater this time because we can afford to be and we can bring a touch of color into place like this not using quite as much water well nowhere near as much actually but still quite watery and again let's just sticking relatively within our lines let's just bold in these touches and then this might run but let's just try just bringing out some of these windows and it doesn't matter if it runs a bit so i'm just being quite gentle but yeah that's working quite nicely actually it's not running too much because um he says and then this one jumps about everywhere it just gets the idea of the sun reflecting and that just you know makes those windows a bit more realistic we can glaze some of our background towers and get some more shadows in here just little touches really and these these rocks let's come around where we've got the shadow let's just come around and and leave them with a real light edge and a real dark edge so the shadow will be at the left and at the bottom and now we've definitely got you know these are definitely structures reaching up they're not part of the forest anymore and we can just so what i'm just doing is softening some of these edges okay and then last bit of color i think we'll just drop some more greens perhaps let's lighten it with a bit of yellow just 
bit more water, I think. Just move them around, vary it back to that green. There we go, now it's more of a forest. And yeah, I like this blue coming down here, actually. It's just going to mix up a few things, get a bit of that red in as well. And let's keep the shadows going there and a bit of shadow coming into our forest. And just to fill this space, we'll get a bit of texture. Texture can come into the forest. The sky. Here's the debate, do I touch it, do I leave it? This bloom's quite nice. I think actually if I get into the sky, there's gonna to be too much going on. There'll, there'll probably be some lines in the sky and this single bloom is pretty interesting. Let's um, just touch some splashes of blue in there and that's, even that's probably a little bit too much. So let's just take them back. So they're still the texture, but they're not this big overarching color. What I'm going to do now, let it dry one more time and we'll go back in with pen and see what we can do. So here we are, we've dried again, or mostly dried, till a few drips of water around. Before I was using a 0.2 millimeter fine liner. Now I'm going to really ramp it up with a 0.8. Need to be careful not to overwhelm everything with this, but at the same time we can really lift things forward and there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of colors, which I think is great, but I think we can enhance it as well. So let's just start by getting this outline really there. And it get, let's us just bring in the things which are important, which are at the front. I can even just get some of those windows again, a couple of them, not all of them. And this, you know, where I've missed something with the color, I can come in and shade and really give it a bit of shape. Then there's this tower, and if I just go down the one side, it again gives an idea of shape. This is where the shadow is, so just give it one bold edge. And then across here as well. So these are our two main buildings. And I think these windows could do with a bit of connecting, so these lines, just drawing them into other things. But also a bit of darkness, because they shouldn't be lighter than the windows which are reflecting the sky. And here, let's get that shape. And this area is a bit in shadow, so let's add some texture to it. And then these windows again can get a bit darker. I'm not going to do too many connecting lines on this side of the image, because they're already there and it needs to be reflecting the light. So you might prefer it before I did this, or you might prefer it after I've done this, or wish I'd done more, or wish when you do it, you'd done more. Um, that's fine. This is about experimenting and playing with how textures and lines and colours and things might work. This is why Sketchbook is a, a friendly environment, a risk, a risk-free, not risk-free, an environment you can take risks because it's safe. It's, you know, not too invested in this this page. Um, like you might be invested in something you spend hours and hours over and just learning that actually when I let go is quite cool really helps with a lot of other things let's bring this tree out as well this this splodge of colour is really quite interesting it offsets the image really nicely we've got a splodge here and these splashes here but it just needs to come forward so that we know it's a tree which is really in our foreground I think that's plenty really. So that was another couple of minutes of, of line work. I think I do prefer it with this line work popping it forwards. Um, I did like it as a, as a sketch without that as well, but I think it's just more clear now. Anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you have, again, please do like and subscribe and uh, hit the notification button, the bell, so you can see when I've posted other things if you want to be kept up to date. Um, if you do have a go at this, let me know how it went in the comments or on my Instagram at Toby Urban Sketch. And uh, I'll just end with showing you the finished big version, the A2 acrylic, um, that I am going to do in the next few days. <laughs> All right, have a good day. 
hope you've enjoyed watching. And as promised, here is the finished acrylic. So, as you can see, it's, to be honest, very similar. I took a lot of the same ideas. So, a lot of line work in here. I actually used ink for a lot of this line work and some acrylic uh, pens as well. Uh, connecting lines, I got these reflections in the in the windows and this glazing of the blue, which I thought worked well. And also these colours just seeping up. And I loved the idea of shape in all the rocks. It's a really dark and a really light edge. And of course this little tree poking up. And then all this texture going on here. There's uh, some lines, some just varying colours and then sort of adding colour and scraping away with a palette knife or scraping lines with a palette knife to get these foreground trees. Anyway, the lighting's not the best. It's quite a bright and bold image really. And I think on this uh, video it looks a bit a bit more sort of dull and uh, overcast, but hopefully you get the idea. Anyway, thanks for continuing to watch. See you guys next week.